Good morning, Michiana, and welcome to Life Inspired. Um, I'm Diane Bennett with Remax 100 and Inspired Homes, and today our guest for Life Inspired is Mindy Cranmer. Welcome. Thanks, Diane. We're glad that you could be here today and share with us. So, um, as you remember, we do these um, Friday morning Life Inspired stories, and they're stories about life was going along, and then dot, 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 God did something, and then now life is inspired. So we're going to hear a little bit about um, a very special story from Mindy <laughs> that um, she's going to tell us about. So tell us, where does your story begin? So the whole dot, dot, dot thing sounds a whole lot like Morse code, like SOS to me. Wow. So like, help. <laughs> <laughs> so before my help me God moment, um, I considered myself to be a very healthy person, try to take care of myself, exercise, eat right, only re really went to the doctor for like routine checkups, that type okay. of thing, you know? And it's kind of ironic that you're having me share my story like during this time because this time last year, I was really sick. That's right. You remember, remember that? Yeah. Um, I kept getting these really bad sore throats, would not go away. It got to the point where I lost my voice completely and never had that happen before. I do remember that. Yeah, and I remember telling myself over the weekend, if my voice doesn't come back by Monday, I'm going to go see the doctor. So Monday comes and my voice is still not back. <laughs> and I go and see the doctor, this particular doctor I had never seen before. And she told me right up front that she was going to you know figure out what's going on with my throat but she wanted to do a thorough examination because she'd never seen me before right so i said okay that's fine so after she confirms yes you have a virus and prescribes me some medicine to take care of it uh, she continues to do her examination so she's kind of feeling on my neck she gets to my thyroid and she goes you know the left side feels a little bit larger i'm kind of concerned about that i think you need to get that checked out further when she said it, I wasn't concerned, even though she was, and I thought nothing of it. So I took the medicine, went home. I started to feel better, but a week later, I started getting the sore throat again. So I ended up seeing her again the following week, and she gave me some stronger medication for it, but then again kind of says, you know, really, you need to get that thyroid checked out. And for whatever reason, when she said that again to me, I said, okay, let's, what's next? What do I need to do? So we scheduled to have me get a ultrasound done and everything. And we're talking about what time of year at this point? So this is right before Christmas. Oh, it's still before yeah, Christmas. Yeah, this okay. is, okay. It, it happened very quickly, okay. all of this. Okay. And so I got through the holidays, went to the ultrasound appointment, still not really concerned. But um, after the appointment, they called me a couple days later to say, kind of suspicious, there might be some cancer there. They said the word cancer. I mean, world completely stops. I then became concerned. Okay, so this is serious. Uh, my next step was to have a biopsy done. And so we scheduled that further into January, went to that appointment, and it confirmed that yes, I had papillary thyroid cancer. And you were actually there with me when I got that news. Yeah. And as you remember, I just completely broke and uh, your world literally stops when you hear that word cancer. And my mind immediately went to, well, I am a wife, I have two boys, and um, how can I have cancer? It just felt like it came out of nowhere, completely right. nowhere. But my, no history of cancer in the family either, right? No, no history at all. And um, my doctor did reassure me that this type of cancer is treatable and would get taken care of by having surgery to remove my thyroid. Mm -hmm. So then the next step was for me to get a surgeon and going to see him, he had to confirm all that was, you know, had taken place to make sure for sure it's cancer. And he did confirm that. But I remember him saying these words were, wow, you had a great doctor because the size of it was small and the location of it was hard to detect. She must be a good, thorough doctor. And so I just felt so reassured that I was in God's hands, that he provided the right doctor at the right time. Mm -hmm. And these th th sore throats had nothing to do with my cancer. They didn't. They didn't. Wow. It just was a means, mm -hmm. like, you know, I just was seeing her for the sore throat, but because of that, it was detected and discovered. Mm -hmm. I remember you telling me I'm getting a little teary just talking mm -hmm. to you about it because I remember how I, I almost felt. brought Kleenex so but I completely <laughs> forgot. Yeah, no, it's okay. 
Okay, so, um, so now dot, 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 God does some things. Although for me, even as you're telling it again, sorry, I'm like totally dripping here. Um, even as you're telling it again, I feel like, you know what? It wasn't even like he waited till the dot, dot, dot time. He was there the whole time. Oh, he, for sure. He let you get sick so it could be found. He yes. let you find the right doctor to find it. I yes. mean, it's just like, thanks, TJ. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, um, and it's totally God that got me through it. My faith in Him, I remember there'd be nights uh, where I'd wake up in the middle of the night and I just remember the, these worship songs playing in my head. And it was as if He had given me these songs so that I could sleep at night. And I remember those particular nights, I felt the most rested, most pe peaceful and comforted. And um, other things that helped me as I really got into God's Word because when you're going through a dark season like that, it's so easy to allow fear to come in. And I needed God's truth to speak into my situation. Um, and God has provided me with such a great support network around me. I have a wonderful husband, and now I'm going to get teary-eyed. <laughs> wonderful husband. I'm, <laughs> I'm good. I'm going to do this. <laughs> Thank you, just in case. Um, wonderful husband. You know, you say those vows on your wedding day, for better, for worse, for sicker, for poor. I yep. mean, this season really tested that for us, and mm -hmm. he really was beside me the whole time. Two wonderful boys, um, great extended family members, um, friends, my inspired family. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you know, we do life, not just work life. Right. We do real life right. together. And you guys were there for me. Um, and we're we praying, yeah. lots and lots of prayers. So was our church family. And your family. church family. Yeah. You're on the, on the prayer team, kids, and I know. Yeah. Our kids' the school and everything just really came alongside of us to let us know that they were there, whether it be a text message, a phone call, a meal, um, just many ways. And we even had people that we didn't know coming alongside wow. of us. And I just wanted, I brought this with me because my husband came home one day with a gift. He works at a factory, and there was a lady on a different shift than him that heard about the story and just wanted to let me know that I wasn't alone in this. And so this I hang in front of my desk just as a reminder. I know it's probably what hard to see. Say, so see. I'll read what it says. It says, just believe, have faith. You are never alone. And the words, you are never alone, was very encouraging to me during that time and it still is today. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. So... So, you guys, there's just amazing stories out there and other people like Mindy that mm -hmm. have had God intervene. I do want to ask, when you were reading the Word at night, what what was He drawing you to? What kind of, what books and chapters was He drawing you to? Um, it was Psalms 91, and there was a Zephaniah, I know this is like a really odd book, but Zephaniah 3 um, were some encouraging things. And um, I just want to just encourage, let's say, a last couple things is, you know, there's so much that's going on in this world and just encourage you to make sure that you know people matter. Um, whether you know them or you don't, um, just make sure people, you know, people need to know that. Um, there's so much going on right now and people, you just never know what they're going through. Um, everybody has scars, Everyone. you know. I mean, I have a physical scar on my neck from the surgery that I went through. And just so you know, I don't think we shared this. I am cancer-free. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so we should yeah, say it. Yeah, I'm cancer but I never got that far. But there's scars on people's hearts as well. You just never know what they're going through. So just make sure you let people know that. And if you are going through a dark season in your life and are struggling, just know that you do matter. What you're going through matters. And um, there's people out there that have gone through things like you and they care. And most importantly, there's a God out there who loves and cares for you and um, died on the cross for you and for me. And he too has scars on his wrists and on his feet because of what he's done for us. And the good news is, is that he had the power to overcome the grave and he has the power to overcome any kind of darkness, even your darkness. And he's overcome my darkness. And because of that, we have hope. Wow. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Miss Shanna. Mm -hmm. Nothing more to say. God bless you guys.